Hello guys, welcome along. Um, Nigel here, I want to put together another little video for you. Uh, sorry you have to look at my face again, but I thought it best to talk to the camera than just have you um, talking to the back of my hands. Um, some of you have already seen my video on the comparison of uh, three of the currently available B52 kits. The first is this new one from uh, Model Collect that everyone's talking about. This is the B52G version um, from Model Collect, as you can see. Uh, very nice kit. I like it a lot. Um, it's got its issues. It's got a lot of problems, but I actually do like it a lot. It, it's um, it's nicely moulded, shall we say. Um, the next oldest kit here, this is the 25 year old AMT B52H, another one I like. Uh, has a lot of issues unfortunately. Some of the issues I found while I was making the video. So the video I've made was as good for you guys as it was for me. Um, there's some stuff that I sort of made myself look up and reference and um, yeah, stuff that I probably wouldn't have looked at before. But uh, yeah, found, found a few issues. So yeah, compared it with that one. And then also compared it with the 50 year old kit from Monogram. This is the Revell boxing. Revell and Monogram do a lot of each other's boxings, as you well know. And uh, yeah, this is um, a very long, very slim box because this one has a one piece fuselage. Yay! Which seems to be uh, impossible for some manufacturers to do these days, especially the likes of Kitty Hawk that seem to make fuselages from every single bloody panel. So um, the biggest uh, issue I picked up on, which I'd never even realised was an issue, was with the shape of the fuselage on this, the um, the Itinerary AMT kit. Sorry, I did, I did forget to mention that it's a, the AMT kit I just showed you is the, the Itinerary boxing currently available. It's exactly the same kit, so with different decals, I think. But um, for a lot of modellers of B-52s, this one, the, the uh, Revell monogram is the Holy Grail. It's um it has raised panel lines unfortunately, but as far as size, accuracy, shape, it's um it's the best one out there, uh, available in many different guises. But it's basically all from the same mold. Um, I've said this many times. Have a look back on my videos. You'll see there's a a 1968 review, a uh, kit review, not 1968. I was five. Um, but yeah, so it's a, a review of the 1968 kit. But when you actually put these two together. If you look, the fuselage on the H is um, it's just a bit slim. So I thought I'd do a get video on how I'm going to go about fattening it up, just for a bit of fun. So I'll start off by replaying the, the snip that was in that hour-long video on the comparison. And um, let you have a look at that again. Um, have a look at this. Rear fuselage sections. Let's just place them next to each other so the wheel bays light up. So I think we can agree. Those fuselage sections look pretty accurate together in width. But as we go back, look how slender the itinerary kit is. And then if we look at the rear pod that mounts on for the gun, look how skinny that is to suit the fuselage. Oh, and they've had to widen the rear fuselage to get the round section in for the Vulcan cannon on the back. So... What do we need to do to correct the itinerary fuselage if we say this one's correct, and I believe it is, to make this one correct? Well, this is quite shocking. This is a, an 8mm piece of tube. This is a 6mm piece of sprue. And if I place a peg on here now, You can see that now the fuselage halves or the fuselage sections pretty much measure up. So that to the say that that means that this area here in the itinerary AMT fuselage is eight millimeters too narrow. And if you follow this line back and you put this in place, you can see that that taper doesn't need to be there. So if you space this out to suit this, you won't have that bulge on the back. And also the area around the top will look better as well. Have a look at references, photographs, drawings, and you'll see exactly what I mean. Right, here we have the offending parts and uh, 
ready for us to start doing some surgery with them. So what we need to do is work out how we're going to get this to spread apart like this without um, causing ourselves too much trouble and stress. Um, a lot of people are scared of cutting kits. I say to you, don't be scared, just go on and do it. It's just a piece of plastic. And at the end of the day, if you slip and make a score, you can fill the score in with super glue or, or um, sprue glue. If you balls up and completely go wrong, then you can just glue some plastic card back in and glue it back together and start rubbing down and filling. I'm sure I'll make some mistakes doing this, but you're going to see how I do it. And if I do make any mistakes, then I'll make sure I show you the corrections. First things first, I just want to make sure that everything fits together okay before we start. So we can see there at the front of that fin we've got a gap um, and that's probably just because yeah a locating pin is too long. Um, that's the story of this kit all over. The locating pins everywhere are too long or holes aren't deep enough. So that's okay but everything fits, everything lines up so we won't have any problems when they're separate. The first thing I'm going to do is remove both halves of the fin. Now you could glue these together and then remove them but I'm going to remove them as two halves. Uh, I think I need to do some correction on this and I know I need to do some correction on the scribing lines. So um, how are we going to remove this? Well the first thing we notice is here we've got this detail which is correct as far as the fins concerned but incorrect as far as the fuselage are concerned because this fuselage is so narrow that you that the actual part should be sort of more up on the top surface rather than down the side like it is there. Um, check your photos, you'll see what I mean. This is an H model. So we're just going to cut through that. So what do we need to do? The first thing we can do is scribe a line. And for that we can use our good old Alpha P cutter or Tamiya scriber. A simple scriber. A saw. Or a knife. Um, I like using the saw. The saw has a very thin blade, it's very rigid, it won't wander and it's very sharp. So it's easy to get into a corner like this and just scribe. Now what I need to do here, I don't want to be ploughing into the fuselage but I also don't want to be ploughing into the fin. Remember when this goes back on this fin is going to be quite a sitting on top of quite a flat surface so it needs to have quite a flat base to start with. So what I'm going to do is angle the knife slightly to the fin because we're going to be sanding the bottom of it off and that will give me a nice edge to do any repair work in here. So what I'm going to do is just by just gently first of all it's just literally the weight of the blade going over the top and then coming down. I'm not pushing down at all. Just letting the blade right over it and now I can start adding some pressure. Now just a quick check to make sure that I'm doing right. Yep, the, the, the scribing is in the corner. So And you notice that with these saws, they've got the screws and the plate on one side. So sometimes it's better to use the other side in areas like this down at the front where it makes it easier to get in. So as you can see here at the front, I'm starting to break through. And look at that. I've written in there October 05. That was when I did this. That was 13 years ago when I last had this kit out of the box. I got it to do the um, the conversion on the wing boot and once I'd done the conversion I was happy I'd succeeded I think I put it on a, one of the modeling forums one of the websites but um, yeah I put it back in the box and stuck it back in the loft so um got it out to do some reviews for you guys do some comparisons um, and here we are now. I, I'd never noticed this before, before that this tail was too thin. I'd read it somewhere and uh, I thought they just meant the actual rear section, the extension on the back for the, um, for the radar pods. But nope, 
it's actually the whole fuselage from sort of the back of the wheel bay, rear wheel bay back. Oops, I snapped the bay, there you go. So like I said, if I do something wrong on camera, I'll show you. So I snap this blade, that'll come in handy. When you break these blades, never throw them away. What you can do, score up one side of it and then super glue it to a piece of plastic card. And then you've got a flat, if you need to cut something flat, you can do it by just by resting the, the, um, the blade on the surface. Like say I wanted to remove this ECM pot. If I had a piece, a piece of plastic card bonded to the top of it, you see I could easily slide it along there, remove that pod easily, and it would stay flat with the rest of the with the rest of the panel. So don't ever throw these away when you snap them. Saying that snap these that easily, it must have had a fracture in it already. These blades are generally extremely tough. Just quick check on the back again. Not quite through yet. Yeah, I think what I need to do now off camera is just move this blade out a bit to give myself some more access. Okay, so that's the blade moved out. That was two seconds for you and about 20 seconds for me. So I'm just going to keep scoring across here. The other thing is with these, you can put them, push them forwards as well as back. And they're extremely good for doing scribe lines, especially over uh, curved surfaces. So yeah, bear that in mind. Right, so we're through there now. Right, so we're nearly through all the way, just this bit at the back here. There we go. So there's the tail section removed. You can see the the form of the fuselage is still stayed there, like that. And the fin is nice and tidy. And that's going to be now moved in like this, so that the rear end will be more correct. In fact, what we could do is try it on the back of the Revell fuselage. And you can see the fit isn't bad. Um, but because it was so close to the outside edge, if I put this in the wrong position, let's see how much better it fits. And as you come up closer to the centre, this area here needs to be sanded away to take out that rock. You can see if I move it there, it's perfect. This could be a good way of converting a Revell D to an H or a G. Hmm. So you have to throw this kit in the bin and just use the parts from this one. And just in case you didn't get on the first one, I'll show you with alternative tools. This is a scribing point. I'm just going to use the point in the centre there. You can see it pulling the plastic up. I'm not going to chance going over that radius, but you can hear it scoring the plastic. I'm just going to get a knife, so we're using alternate tools. And just put the knife roughly in the right position and rock the knife to make a groove. I was pushing down quite hard then and then we could use the scriber to scribe over the top, turn it over, scribe over the top into the corner and now I can go back to scribing all the way over and back, all the way over and back over but you see because of the way this is done you don't really want to keep going with this point because you will end up with a very wide cut so I can use a knife but this will literally take forever because the knife is just literally cutting it's not removing any material so it'll take quite a while to go through and because the tendency is to push hard it's uh, it's not a good thing so now we're going to move on to the scriber. Angling it slightly away, like so. Just letting the scriber do the work. And there you can see that 
all the tools do roughly the same job. If you want to go back to your point, you can. But as you can see here, this is a good place to show you. Any tools you use other than that saw are going to remove more material than the saw does. So I'm going to go back to the saw just to get this final cut. I put through now there at the front. Pretty much through all the way now. So there's obviously just a little bit here that needs to come out. And there we go. So now we can put our fuselage halves together like so and we need to fill this in just roughly just to keep it all so we've got one straight edge to work with and not have to try and kind of make a fillet that's going to fill this gap and then and then have to taper off to the sides like that the other thing i need to do is sand away these bumps where those parts were there i don't quite know what those parts are but obviously some kind of mounting for the uh, for the vertical fin so i'll get on with that now and I'll just make some card up to fill these in. Right, I've done one side, so I'll show you guys the other side now. So there's that bump there. If you want to learn a quick little tip to make sure when you're sanding, to make sure you don't sand too much. If you're just removing a bump like this, if you get a marker pen and go around it like that, just make a line. Then with your with a rigid sander stick, not a sponge, you need something rigid when you're doing stuff like this. Just gently sand away. Keep moving the part. Be careful of other detail that you might be touching with your sander stick. Just keep sanding away like so. Until the marker pen's gone. And then you know you're not going too deep. Just another little tip for you there. But what I do want to do, I want to make sure this top area here has got all that fin removed. So I'm just going to do some sanding across the top of there. Like so. And then it looks like on this side it was actually undercut where the fin goes. So it's going to need a bit of filler in there. But I also want to make sure that where I'm gluing the plastic card, I've got square face to a square face and this plastic here I doubt you can see it in this film but it's actually tapered off so when I glue a piece of plastic to it it's going to fall like it's going to be like this and I want it to be square onto it so I'm just going to square that edge up so I gently scrape it with a knife keeping the blade square with the center line of the fuselage and then the quick side it doesn't need to be perfect because the liquid cement will take care of any little gaps or anything but there we go so now I've got that square and now I can mark out some plastic card and cut it right I've got a piece of plastic card here this is 1.5 millimeters thick I'm using thick plastic card because it means then I can when I glue it on I can raise it slightly above the surface and it gives me something to sand back if I used like 0.7 millimeters or 30 thou then I'd have nothing to sand. I'd have to build up on top of it and then sand that back. So I like to use something thicker, leave it proud, and that gives me something to sand back. So I need to get on here and mark this out. Now, the easiest way to do this, I know that it's 10 mil wide, so I could cut a 10 mil strip, but just in case it's not symmetrical, what I'm gonna do, you can't really see what I'm doing here, can you? Because the, put that, plast put that on the plastic card like that. And then take my pen and draw around the shape like so. And that gives me a rough idea of where I need to cut. And again, taking the scriber, I'm going to 
not putting hardly any pressure on it at all just gently follow the line again it doesn't need to be perfect you're going to sand it to fit there we go now I've done it once it should be a lot easier to follow if you don't have one of these get one they're bloody brilliant it's called an alpha P cutter it's also called a Tamiya scriber and you can see what it does it actually cuts you can see it raising the the plastic out so instead of like a, a point when you're scribing a point will actually push the plastic up either side and you end up with a like a trough you've got to sand off and then it often just pushes the edges, edges back in this gives you a bit of a raised edge but it's nothing like scribing with a point so just keep doing this until we get through if you notice I'm not starting right at the front because if you start right at the front there's always a chance you're going to slide off so I start about 10 millimeters back from the front and then once I've got most of this done I'll turn it round and now I'll scribe the, the front We're almost through. No, we're not. And then once we are almost through, you get out of the knife just go through it the same here there we go and now so this half this half that will fit in there like so you can see there and I'll glue that in back it up with some uh, sprue goo and then once that's gone off I can sand that to shape and now I've got a straight edge to work with when it comes to pulling the sides apart so I'll go on and do the same on the other side right so I've cut the other side out now and done that one that one's over there I'll just show you how I'm going to glue one of these on as if I need to show you how to glue stuff I've got this Tamiya orange cement which I think is the same as the white in this country but I got this uh, from a brawl through eBay um, it's not bad glue but Dan says it dries extremely fast and as you can see as soon as you put the lid back on the bottle the thread grips it's a pain in the arse so I prefer to use uh, Revell contactor although this stuff is a bit more glue piece but you've got to work fast because within minutes well in seconds that'll be dry so I'm going to place this in here like so making sure it's sitting proud that's the whole reason for using the thick card just get it to sit proud and then there'll be something there to sand back. Sandback, that's a place in England, isn't it? Sandback, or is it Sandbatch? So there we go. As you can see, that's in place now. Now, I don't need to worry too much about any small gaps or anything like you can see in there, because basically, The sprue goo that I put in from the back and front is going to fill that in. So I'll leave that there to go off a little bit. I might just, I think I might just put a drop of extra thin in just to sort of reactivate that thicker glue I used. And that'll get the, um, the itinerary plastic going as well. If you notice I say Italieri, not Italieri. Look at the box people, it's not Italieri, it's Italieri. 
I think it used to be Italia, Italieri, but it's not anymore. Another rant over with. <coughs> so there we go. All right, that's that for now. Uh, glued those in, and then um, put some screw glue in behind and on top of them, as you can see there. So uh, yeah, all done. So wait for those to go off now. Leave those for well, at least till tomorrow, and then. Um, sand them back flat so I end up with two perfectly mating fuselage halves ready to start on the, the spreading. <laughs>